So this is the thing, you have to understand that. And then you find we're told that depressed people feel helpless and hopeless. They feel helpless and they feel hopeless. In fact, it's interesting that I read that depression is similar to the helplessness in laboratory animals who remain in unpleasant situations from which they are unable to escape. They have sort of, you know, strange behavioral patterns. So this feeling of, I have no control, I am helpless, I am hopeless, there is no hope, how can, honestly, how can a Muslim not have hope? How can you not have hope? You must always hope. Uh, hope is free. You don't have to pay for hope. You, you, if you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will always hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how will you feel helpless? As I said, you're the servant of Allah. You're the servant of Allah. You're the slave of the Lord of all of the universe. The one who has power over everything. You're not helpless. Well, I mean, we are helpless. Every human being is helpless. But we are the least helpless in reality. Because the one who is supporting us is more powerful, has power over everything. Power over whatever the United States of America has. Well, actually, it all belongs to Allah and He has control over all of it. So you have to understand that whatever is happening, whatever is going on, it's there for a reason. And this is important. A Muslim has to trust in Allah. A Muslim has to trust that whatever is happening in their life, it's there for a good reason. However confusing it may be, but that's easy to accept that Allah knows what you don't know. Allah knows what's best for you. It's not everything that you... Is it everything? that is good for you, you like it? Or is it sometimes there's things that are good for you, but in fact you don't like it? Right? True or not? There are things that are good for us, and often we don't like them. And there are things that are bad for us, and often we like them. So the fact that I like it or don't like it, doesn't mean that it's good for me or bad for me. And that comes from trusting on Allah. No, you know, this is why every Muslim should have a good opinion of Allah. A good opinion of Allah means that I believe that what is happening to me in my life is for the best. That Allah will guide my life and guide me in my life for what is best. Because that's my good opinion of Allah. That's my good opinion of Allah. I have that good opinion. Yeah, this is how the believer should be. So you shouldn't feel helpless and you shouldn't feel hopeless. So brothers and sisters, I think that's really uh, an interesting, you know, those are the main, you know, characteristics of somebody who is depressed. And, and it's very interesting, by the way, I just thought this is a very interesting thing. I noted this down. Depression is less likely to occur as well as quicker to remit amongst those who are religious. It's interesting, right? And why is that? Because they have the ability to correct their thinking pattern and improve their mood. And that's what it's about, brothers and sisters, right? It's our thinking patterns, right? The way we think. You do... and. One of the such important things you need to understand is you have control of your consciousness. You have control. Or at least you have the tools to be in control of how you react to things. Is it, hands up who's married. Hands up who's married. Yeah? Brothers, married brothers. Okay, I'm going to ask a married brother, right? Does your wife nag you sometimes? Yeah? That was a good laugh over there, bro. Is, you, is your wife here today? Does she nag you sometimes? Uh, not much. Not much? Okay, okay. I'm not asking everyone to diss their wives, right, in public and turn off the video. 
right? <laughs> okay, bro, I won't ask for volunteers, right? Okay. But you know what? I think we will experience that. The wife, Max. When are you going to do this? When are you going to do that? How are you going to do this? Da 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 I don't react to it very well. I don't react to it well at all. But, um, you know, there's something, a little simple thing that I just understood. Is that actually, I have control of my inner experience. I don't have to react to what my wife is saying if I don't want to. Because think about it. All that is really happening is there are sound waves going from your wife's mouth to your ears, right? Now those sound waves could come from a speaker, they could come from earphones, they could come from anything, but they're just sound waves. You can treat them as sound waves. That's just sound waves coming to my head, right? Okay, I don't have to react. I don't have to react. In fact, yes darling, yeah, whatever you say. Right. You're the boss. Okay. You know, seriously, you don't have to react. And it's true about anything. Let, let me give you a real example, right? Of how consciousness, you have control of consciousness and your consciousness controls you. This is how it should be. And by the way, this is what Islam is teaching you. When you are fasting, right? As any doctor here will tell you, right? So if I get it wrong, you can correct me, right? The feeling that we have called hunger, we have a feeling called hunger, right? Is produced by chemicals in our body. When our body needs food, it sends out chemicals, right? And those chemicals create, and I don't know the exact details of it, but they create the feeling that we call hunger. It's your body's way of saying, I need fuel. But your consciousness, when you are fasting Ramadan, overrides that biological impulse. Why? Because you have something more important that you want to achieve. You have chosen, you have decided, you have directed your intention and your consciousness to another goal, which you consider more important. And that is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you now are controlling the impulses of your body. Your mind is controlling your body. And you know people can do this to the extent that they can even starve themselves to death. They can starve themselves to death. You can develop self-control to the extent that you will not feel pain. Physical pain. You can learn to control your reaction to things that much. And I believe that that's part of what Islam is teaching us. Why do we learn to fast Ramadan? Well, life is a test. We don't give in to every impulse and every, you know, feeling or urge that we have. No. In Islam is te teaching us to be in control. Be in control of consciousness. You have control. You, when you fast Ramadan, it teaches you that. To be in control, brothers and sisters. Okay? And that is a very, very important thing. Because depression is something really that's going on inside your head. It's about your patterns of thinking. It's about the way that you think. There is no magic solution. You can't come and if a person is really depressed, you can't just turn a switch and like they feel better the next day. Right? It doesn't work like that. I mean, clinical depression is something quite serious. But it is connected to thinking processes. And a lot of us just don't realize how much potential control we do have over what goes on inside our head. Okay, and I do believe that Islam teaches us that we have and we can have that control.